Alright everybody, so welcome back. Last session, after praying to Sune at the Temple of the Restful Lily, a place of that was originally a place of rest devoted to that particular goddess. Um, after praying to her, you all vowed to restore the Restful Lily to its former glory, and not only that, leave it stronger than you had found it when you arrived or before it was taken over by the Hag Coven that had claimed residence over it. After vowing to do that, you were able to restore your friend to the world of the living, although he had returned to you all a changed person, seemingly gone through quite a bit during their during his stay uh, on the Outer Plains. After getting Rigel back, you all set to fulfilling your promise. You broke the terrible curse that the hags had left on the place, freeing three of the victims immediately as they were cowering in, a, in the tower there with the paintings that had cursed them that the hags had created to trap their essence within four paintings hung up there and you destroyed all four of them however the fourth victim was nowhere to be found you did discover her hidden away locked away rather in a old temple to sune on the grounds of the restful lily she had been driven quite mad by her ordeal, having been locked below there, transformed into a Medusa for just over 10 years. You were all able to calm her, though, to break through and get through the madness to reach Sovare and convince her that you all meant well. After that, with her help, and with the help of Sune, you were all able to restore the Temple of the Restful Lily to its former glory. You all prepared to depart, leaving one of your number behind as sort of payment for the favor that was done to you, done for you all. Once you left, you made for the teleportation circles of Silvery Moon, expecting to make your way back to Candlekeep from there. But when you arrived at the city, an urgent message was waiting for you there from an old friend. Pickles, saying that the calamity of our age was upon us and he needed your assistance in Baldur's Gate immediately to present, prevent extreme disaster from falling Sword Coast. Following that note, following that message from Jar of Pickles, you all found yourselves on the gritty streets of Baldur's Gate not long after. quickly made your way to the meeting point that was decided for you. The floating tavern that Pickles was so excited about when he first arrived, the Low Lantern. When you arrived, you found Pickles in the company of two strangers. A armed and armored woman and a little frog person who looked rather distraught. Pickles, having noticed your, all arri your arrival, was exuberant, jumping to his feet, slamming on the table and approaching you all grabbing Uskar by the shoulders, exclaiming once more that a terrible calamity was soon to befall the Sword Coast, that the world was at stake, and then he proceeded to ask Uskar if he likes crab. That is where we're going to go ahead and pick up today. <laughs> right. I don't remember being asked if Uskar likes crab, but okay. Not crabs, which is a very important... <laughs> <laughs> very keen distinction. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> For sure. So, there in the Low Lantern, the extremely serious jar of pickles having Uskar by the shoulders after proclaiming the certain downfall of of civilization in the Sword Coast. So, do you like crab, Scar? <laughs> Sounds like a trap. No. Oh, do you punk? No. <laughs> the trap is exactly the problem. What if I told you that all of the Sword Coast was about to not be able to get crabs ever again? No more crab stew, like, no more crab rolls, no more just dipping your crabs in butter, nothing! Um, I'm okay with that. His Cause... eyes go wide. He, like, completely color drains from his furs. 
You're a monster. <laughs> like, I like, I like real, I like real meat. It's okay. He's a land lover. He's in Dude. with big beef. To start with, uh, what would prevent various fishermen from gathering crab? Not various fishermen. There is only one. One village with the wherewithal, with the knowledge, with the pure gusto to truly farm the crabs of the Sword Coast. Not just any crabs. See? And he pulls out from behind him like a four-foot claw. This. What? This is the type of crab that they harvest. A big-ass crab. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it a big-ass crab? It is It is a four-foot like... crab claw. Whoa. It's a big-ass crab. Um, Don't ask where he got Ush it from, where he pulled it from. <laughs> Four-foot claw? Damn. Ushkar would definitely be like, so, I may not eat them, but why can't they get them? Says, well, I may not be the one to properly describe this to you. Why don't I introduce you to my good friend over here? And Pickles directs you over towards the seat, the table that he was at. Uh, Brayla happens to be there. We got a brief description of Brayla earlier. And um, the Pond Mother, Pickles would introduce her as. So Pickles would approach and be as a, everyone, this is Brayla. She had something to do. She wanted to candle keep something, meet you guys. He kind of gestures towards you, Brayla. Please uh, stop, stop speaking. I don't think that is possible, but I will try. <laughs> she just puts uh, another mug of whatever he's drink, probably milk in front of him. <laughs> he pulls out whiskey and pours it in. Ew. <laughs> mm, milk and whiskey, that sounds rough. Sounds terrible. <laughs> but rum and eggnog, what's the difference? A accurate. <laughs> oh, true enough. She's, uh, Brilla had... just says, I, I have nothing to do with the crabs. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Pickle said that you were called the, uh, Nathaniel looks at the, uh, frog-like woman and said, individual and states, uh, Pickle said you were called the pond mother, correct? She nods. And she opens her mouth and like a series of like bubble popping noises and like suction sounds and things like that start coming out. And Pickles turns towards her and begins mimicking the same sounds. And they seem to be having a conversation with each other back and forth. And then they start going through some strange languages. And then finally the pond mother opens her mouth and like this deep resonant language begins pouring out from her. Does anybody here speak primordial? I do now. Oh. Wait, Fantastic. I might. <laughs> how do you how do you suddenly speak it? Tongues. I just cast a tongue spell. <laughs> oh, I also uh, know primordial. Awesome. So eh. I also understand. Yes. I bet Rella they knew primordial. <laughs> we'll never know. A lost friend. We miss her. But you seem nice. <laughs> you seem nice. So, the pond mother introduces us. She says, I am the pond mother. Again, in that deep, deep residual voice. It sounds like it's meant to be done underwater. But Pickle says, Yeah, Common's real rough on the vocal cord. She's gonna, she's gonna, can she's gonna speak primordial if that's okay with all of you. Uh, I say absolutely. Yeah, Rigel. Rigel says, "Please can." Okay, so she and continues. I will, I will translate for the party as we go. <laughs> or Rigel can either. Okay. So, she continues and she says, "I am the pond mother. I am matron of." A village of my people, just south of the city here. Yeah, a... We provide the vast majority of the Sword Coast with their fresh-caught crab. We have... Well, yes, take it up. 
the president's elsewhere. What was that? What? So she hey, goes on. Who? She goes on and says, Our village has become besieged. Pickles here told us that you all are courageous champions of the downtrodden. He told me of the jackal wares in this very city that you were able to assist and restore them to their own prosperity. We hope that you may find it in your hearts to help us as well. We would be grateful and Candlekeep, I'm sure, would appreciate the stores and the products that we would ship to them continued. Um, Rigel will look back at the group and say, um, this frog creature has a trivial matter that seems beneath our Pickle's station. eyes like bulge out of his skull. It's like grabbing onto his trivial. You, you, you said besieged. Um, besieged by what? She nods solemnly, says it was prophesized. Here. And she pulls out a leather-bound tome almost the size of herself. She's rather diminutive, only about four foot tall. The book is huge. She reaches down and pulls it up and puts it onto the table. And she says, I understand those from Candlekeep find interest in things such as this. You will find this to be a very unique volume. She opens it. And inside reveals three intricately carved hollow wooden cylinders and a linen bag of dry clay. She pulls everything out and arranges it on the table. And she splays out the mud on the table and you hear her making some And she just like, for lack of a better word, vomits up a bunch of water onto the table and makes a nice little plaster across the tabletop with the clay she just laid out. She Raylan then just lifts her, her mug up. <laughs> so it's out of the way. So, she pulls out one of the wooden cylinders and rolls it across the clay. The first cylinder shows and explains how the Gripply people became skilled at harvesting giant crabs, how they were able to almost domesticate them, even. A feat unequaled by anybody in the Sword Coast. The only ones that have ever gotten close would be the Tritons of the Deep. But the Gripply have mastered, and it shows the it shows the kind of history of how the Gripply became skilled at harvesting them. And then it also shows them loading them onto seagoing vessels and the frog folk celebrating their newly found wealth. She then takes the second cylinder and rolls it out next to the other one. The second cylinder story begins with serpent creatures lurking ominously outside of the Gripply village. And then the serpent, for the serpent folk rush forth, capturing or killing any of the frog folk who try to stand against them. And as the village falls into disarray, the giant crabs escape from their cages and head back out into the sea. She then gets the third cylinder and rolls it across the mud. And the third cylinder depicts and briefly tells about the aftermath of the serpent folk assault. The village is vacant, most of its buildings are flattened, Still standing is the Gripley's temple to their deity, which has been taken over by the snake creatures. The Pond Mother steps back, begins piling the mud back up into a ball before putting it back into her pouch without saying anything, putting everything back into the book of cylinders and closing it, latching the cover. She says, This prophecy has been known to our people for many generations. I believe it is currently unfolding back in my home. 
see, some ten day ago, several, several snake folk arrived in our village. Some of them looking like Where's some of Where's her village you. again? She says that it was just south of Baldur's Gate, north of Candlekeep. So between the two cities, between the two places. So she goes on. And she explains how the serpent folk arrived were peaceful. They showed up, introduced themselves openly, carrying no weapons, unarmed, and introduced themselves to the frog people and told them all that they were simply there to excavate some ancient relics that had been left at a temple nearby. The frog mother tells you that this temple was once the former spot of the village, but it was too isolated, too far from the water, so they moved it. And that temple has been unoccupied for many years now. They saw no reason to deny the serpent folk their their archaeology, their their dig. So they let them go. A few days after that, though, more serpent folk arrived, seemingly unaware of the first group, and immediately began indiscriminately slaughtering the Gripply people enslaving those that they could, murdering those that stood in their way. A lot of them escaped, including the Pond Mother here, before she made her way over to a trading spot, to a trading outpost where she met with Pickles, who brought her here to meet with you all. She says that the Snake People immediately captured and imprisoned the original group of Snake People that had arrived in the village. So she does feel confident that they are not in league in any way. In fact, if anything, direct enemies. But she tells you that that is the situation happening at her village. She says that not only would you all be doing a great service to her and her people, but also there are businesses all up and down the Sword Coast that depend on her and her village's supply to stay in business. She says that you all would be doing not just her, but the entire Sword Coast a great service. And Pickles just nods in agreement. Very, very serious look on his face. Um, I, I doubt Alistair would, but would Adso recognize um, the description of the Snake People and what they are? Um, Anybody proficient can make a history check. We okay. can do that for Adso, if Adso is also... Okay. Uskar, you would recognize the descriptions, especially as the Pawn Mother goes into further detail about these creatures, that they are, in fact, you want to. Uh, yeah, I think I know what they are. <laughs> yeah, so you you would definitely, the two of you would definitely be familiar with the fact that these are you want um, The various descriptions the Pawn Mother is giving you tells you that not that various different types of these creatures have arrived and are currently um, holding her village. Um, do y'all know what they might be trying to do at this temple? I mean, are the I mean, the the, group, the second group that arrived were, were are obviously what I would consider evil. Um, and usually when evil snake creatures and stuff like that want to do something at a temple, it's not good. Nathaniel, that checks out all the way with your 27. <laughs> if, they have, <laughs> if they have interest in a temple, it's probably not good. <laughs> As I suspect, most likely some form of desecration or using it as some sort of site or some sort of rite or ritual is what I would suspect. I asked the pond mother, this temple, um, is it originally one of your people's temple, or is it originally of the snake people? She does say that it does bear markings of snakes throughout the temple. It is not of her people. And you know that snakes eat frogs, right? She says there wasn't any snakes there when they got there. I mean, this is the perfect day to go on a snake hunt. 
I was gonna say, gentlemen, it sounds as if we have us a... Nick's good eating. I mean, because this <laughs> is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, Just to drive out all the snakes. <laughs> wow, that is... that is great. Dunch. Dunch. <laughs> um... Yeah, Rigel's all for this. He views snakes as dragon kind. That really is something, though, isn't it? We're about to go fight some snakes in at St. Patrick's Day. That was totally unplanned. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It had to be unplanned. I mean, we could have gotten this far, you know, a couple of weeks ago or something. Right. If you did plan this, I'd be scared of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> He missed those two weeks. <laughs> he realized it, and that's why he made us miss two weeks. Yep. <laughs> that's it. Yep. The totally. criminal mastermind. Because All right, I, let's go. I, I assume. I can kill some snakes. I, 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 I assume you have your ship here? Yes. Pickles nods and says, It's been ready to sail for over two days now. I've just been keeping it ready for y'all. How, how long of a, of a trip is it? Not far. He shows you all his little, one of his maps that he pulls out and unrolls onto the table. Making sure it doesn't, like, you know, touch the pond mother's projectile. And... Uh, it took us two days to get to Candlekeep, and you, and you said this is roughly halfway? Yep. So only a day of travel. Is this, is this your ship, or is this somebody else's ship? They're all my ships. He smiles a toothy grin at you. Bushkar just rolls his eyes and drinks his beverage. It's uh, the same beverage. ship. It is, in fact. It is, in fact. I have renamed it, you see. It is now the Estrambe. Um, did um, High Reader Flattergast agree to that? I don't think he cares. I, I, high Reader who? I, I, mm, Flattergast. <laughs> you know, the who master of the ship. Must have, must have <laughs> slipped, must have slipped my mind. I, as far as I'm aware, I am the only owner of the Estrambe. Of course. I love this cat. <laughs> so, um, bef wait, before, can we do a little bit of like, I don't want to take up too much time here, but just like logistics before we leave town, I have some like shopping or Pickles um, leans in and says, "You are. You have all the time that you need." Okay. Cool. But, well, didn't exactly leave any friends in the city last time you left. I left some friends. Bushkar <laughs> doesn't make friends. He's okay. And we did leave some friends. We left the Amper Dunes here. They are our friends. Well, as for we the rats, also left some enemies. As for the rats, surely they do not even know we are here, and they definitely don't know he is here, and I point at Rigel. Um, if you remember, la at the end of last session, as the point of order, you all were noticed walking through the city. That's about so to we're, say. we're in Baldur's Gate right now, is that right? <laughs> that is correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh... Okay. This is a weird kind of point of order because I came back as like a totally different class. Yeah, it's, I mean, like it's really up to you what my... kind of memories you can recover. Well, it's more about a, what equipment I, <laughs> I I came back with that right. I have. Any, so we know. would we would basically assume that any gear that Rigel's body had that would immediately transfer over to you, and then as far as anything else, just like your mundane gear, your weapons, your armor, um, all that kind of stuff you would have acquired during your travels through the Outer Plains. So, okay. is there anything that you do not have that you feel like you would have had after an extended adventuring journey in the Outer Plains? I did have a shield and I had scale mail, which is fine to begin with. Unfortunately, I don't have a stabby, stabby weapon, which is what okay. I really... Um. Alistair will um, transform um, and into 
um, Alec, his, his 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 dwarf form. I think I don't think I've shown this face in Baldur's Gate. I'm sure I could go pick up whatever you need, and nobody would be the wiser. Ushkar's proficient with the skies kit too. Um, and I also think. have this. Let me think. Um, I would actually. I have some pretty sweet, um, custom-made scale mail, what, dragon what scale mail, that I would trade, if possible, for basic studded leather armor. Yeah. And I. I could use a longbow and some some arrows, and I could use a rapier. And I th think that Rigel had got like a mace. Ugh. Yeah, as opposed to trying to like trade stuff, better just to for for one of you know with you know, like me in completely unrecognizable form and using all of my street knowledge to just go out with some <laughs> coin and okay. buy what you need real quick and all right. be jolt the ship. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll yeah. You gotta I'll say, I got a hundred All the money I have. Uh, how much do you, uh, how, do you know how much it should cost you to get this stuff? Um, I don't five, think it should, it should be 60, that much. About a hundred, I it would be my rough estimate. How much is a longbow? I think it's like forty or fifty. Yeah, they're not no, cheap. It's... Longbows aren't that expensive. Uh huh. Yeah, a rapier, studded... a longbow, and a studded leather. So that's probably what, like a hundred and fifty. No, that's gonna like be that. that's gonna be it's probably under a hundred because studded leather's forty-five, a rapier's fifteen. Oh, um, rapier's only fifty. Yeah. Yep, rapier is twenty-five. Oh, twenty-five. Okay, so. And the longbow is 50. That's 75 right there. And then the armor, the studded leather is 45. 45, right? Yeah. That was at what, 120? This, uh, 115. Call it 120. And, and uh, he is going to need some arrows, I assume. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I call it 120, and that'll be a quiver of arrows as well. Okay. I'm, uh,. My personal reserves, I have 121 gold if there's any additional needed. You should have some of the gold that Rigel had still. Yeah. Okay. Any gold that was on Rigel's body. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know well, I kind of you, can, some of can, you, can you sell the scale mail that I had? I mean, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. And since it is unique, know. we'll say that you can actually get full price out of it, too. There you Save go. Half. Okay. Boom. So, okay. So... Alistair's plan is to go out, leave leave the tavern as um, as Alec. Once he gets into a crowd, though, he will like start noticing faces, and when he's in spots where he's sure he won't like be noticed, he'll be using all of his urchin background city streets feature to know when to change forms so that he by the time he actually is selling stuff. He is a human blacksmith-looking guy um, <laughs> that looked like never got within 500 miles of Candle Keep. Okay, awesome. And then we'll meet everybody back at um, the Escambe or whatever it was called. The Estrambe. <laughs> Pickles will tell you all that it means ball of yarn in exotic language. <laughs> on my Maybe. way out, do I do I notice any um, radish folk trying to keep an eye on everything? Um, make a perception check or investigation. So as you're making your way, as you're making your way out, you definitely see a few people that fit the description um just general rat-like features and moving in groups they're definitely out here they don't seem to be on any sort of high alert or anything um if any of them are you know 
obviously watching the exit of the um, uh, the Low Lantern, I will send um, um, Argoth back to the party to inform them um, of that. Okay. Uh, nobody seems to be watching the exit at current. Okay. Then Argoth will stick with me in case I need to um, be even more stealthy than I am now. Okay. All right. Yeah, with all of that preparation, Alistair, there's really no chance anyone would notice you. Um, no one is actively looking for a for a shape changer, so that does give you quite the edge. Um, but yeah, you're able to get all that done with relative ease because of the extreme measures that you have taken to make sure that you're successful. So yeah, um, you do manage to pull all of that off. The, uh... okay. He wasn't a dwarf when he came in here, was he? No. You'll get used to it. I was just it. my normal You'll Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> kind of pop the shelf. He does these things. There's this creepy little girl he likes to turn into, and I just want to punch her in the face. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Incidentally. Uh, she's just going to look at Uskar and just mutter humans in Dwarvish at him. He's just going to scoff. Fuck, Fuck you. you, my accent's perfect. <laughs> no, he's scoffing at the human comment. Oh, well, then yes. <laughs> Nathaniel just shakes his head at it since he knows exactly what she said. <laughs> he gives her a look, looks at like at him, at, at Nathaniel. And he's like, Meh. <laughs> <sighs> I'm uh. Ush Ushar's just gonna continue drinking at this point. Uh, a question, Sir Brayla. Considering the fact that there is a possible some of the uh, well bipedal vermin of the city might be noticing us are any of the weapons you have considered ma magical or silvered in any way I don't know DM uh, did you they? have any plus one or magical weapons beforehand you were a bard so I had a bard <laughs> I don't think she even had a magical anything. Yeah, I, there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole big, there's not a real big distribution of magical weapons in this game, so I would say just any mundane weapons and armor that you were able to pick up. Okay. Well, who can give who you a silver all dagger? has magic weapons? Who all currently is in possession of magic items? Let's go with that. Uh, Nathaniel. But he makes his own, so right, that's right. why. I know. Uh, Sorry, uh, uh, value magic. Uskar's got the Ring of Ram, the Sword of Vengeance, and a silver dagger. What the okay. fuck, man? You're uh, hoarding silver... all the magic shit. So you guys gave me the ring of ram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the silver dagger I had to fight when we fight the stupid rats, because I didn't have anything to hurt them with, so I grabbed one of their <laughs> one of their daggers. <laughs> Adso Ooh. has a pearl of power, and um, Alistair has the helm of telepathy and the um, Pawathwi that yeah. he was You can given. hit them with the pearl like it's a cue ball. I mean, you all are in Baldur's Gate. It does cost 500 gold. Oh, does, is it 500 gold to silver a weapon? Let me double check there real quick. No, 100 gold. Well, 100, thank you. I thought that I was not too high. Do we have well, the silver was, weapons? Well, I was if, actually... If you want to fight Are we fighting rats, werewolves you... or some shit? No, I thought we were, I thought we were yeah, fighting yeah. snake people. Yeah. You do the have... You have made an enemy of a gang of were rats in Baldur's Gate. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the main uh, thing that Nathaniel was thinking was he does still still have that little device crafted from the uh, Black Dragon Acid Sack that can swap the damage from the normal damage to acidic on a weapon. I don't know if that would count as magical or not, but it it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> It's a hundred gold conduit. pieces. When held by an artificer, Sorry. this device transmogrifies the elemental damage of any spell into acid damage. The device can oh, also be attached to any yeah. mechanism to provide the same effect. Okay. It is an artifact-specific item. I mean, an artificer-specific oh, okay. so item. Specifically for artificers, okay. 
My Star apologies. Well, I, I just had to list it down as Black Dragon Acid Sack. Cause I thought... uh, you, my bad. I actually haven't uh, haven't given you the handout yet. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Star's going to look at Brayla and be like, are you one of those dirty magic users too? I mean, yeah. Now he really scoffs the, the dirty look at you. Hmm. You're just smirking back at him. I think Nathaniel may just apply this thing to his repeating shot crossbow then. Now we're shooting acid arrows. <laughs> we're shooting acid arrows. Are snake people resistant to acid? Something. Is that, uh, is that meta mount knowledge? Um... I don't well, know. Nathaniel venomous, did. Right? Nathaniel did get a twenty-seven crit success on <laughs> his history check in regards to the Yuan T. So let's check. Buscar needs to get his uh, sword of vengeance turned into a battle axe of vengeance. <laughs> Nathaniel would be aware that they do have some pretty heavy resistances and immunities to poison, but not to acid. Okay. okay. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, there we go. Let me just put that in there. City conduit, okay. A little note in it so I know what it does. Cool. Okay, uh, I guess some our next move would be to head to the ship then. Yep. Fight some wear routes first. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now I'll meet y'all at the ship with all the new weapons and armor for um, Shadow Boy. Should I just take a hundred gold pieces off and say I have a silver uh, Warhammer? Yes, if Alistair had it, went out to do all of your chores and errands while in disguise, then yes. Okay. Awesome, thank okay, you. Okay, then I have come back and delivered stuff. Right. Armor up, boys. Okay. Ah, my cat is being a terror. Okay. All right, everyone. So... Who wants to roll that d20 on your way from the low lantern to pickles? Shit. I'll do it. Okay. So, the pond mother, having stayed behind at the low lantern, pickles, assuring her that she'll be far safer here in the company of Lorelra Cedar Guard, the proprietor, who you all met briefly before. She was also there with her little crab familiar hanging out on her shoulder, just like last time. Um, but Pickles assures the Pond Mother that she'll be much safer staying behind and escorts you all to his ship. And you will see that the previous name of the ship has been scratched off rather crudely and in... Just slapped on black paint beneath that name is the word Estrombe. And... Yeah. No ambush on the way there. Nathaniel Please. winces as he sees this because it hurts the cra it hurts his craftsman's soul. <laughs> uh, you can always cast Mending on it later and fix it. <laughs> oh, it just hurts. It hurts. <laughs> Pickle sees you, wincing at his, as wincing at it, he walks over and he says, Ah, yes, ah, yes. I understand that my that my expertise, my artistry, can cause jealousy in some. Try not to feel too bad. Not all of us can be true artists. Uskar just laughs. 
Pickles will start laughing too. Uh, pats Pickles on the shoulder like they're there. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I'll survive, Pickles. I think I'll survive. <laughs> yes, that's the spirit. You will. And with that, you all make your way out to sea. Can I take a short rest? Uh, yes, you all would have the opportunity to take a short rest while on the boat. Wait, we haven't had a long rest before this? Yes, but I cast this third level spell and I want it back. <laughs> all right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. And with that, once more, you all leave Baldur's Gate behind you and set to sea aboard Pickle's ship. How long will it take us to get there? Uh, less than a full day. Let's you know that the now? I destination assume. is just right down here. It would have been... What would it have been? Probably be evening when you all leave, putting you at the Gripley Village in the morning. Yeah, about midday when you got to Silvery Moon, travel here, spend the day in Baldur's Gate, let uh, Alistair do all the shopping, get to the ship, make ready the ship, take off. Yeah, early evening. Cool. Sweet. Um, let's settle. What's the sunrise? Are, are we seeing the sunrise from the ship? Um, yeah. So first off, could somebody roll me one more d20? It does get a bit stormy while you guys are out at sea. Nothing too terrible. Pickle seems... I've got this one. Pickle what? seems unbothered by it. music all right so full day of travel <laughs> you all can actually take a long rest if you'd like to and if there's anything that you would like to do in preparation of getting to the village feel free yeah. thing i want to do in preparation yeah uskar's gonna sharpen his blade a little bit this isn't like downtime technically or it's it? only a day, only a few hours, so not really. Um, I guess uh, Rigel might try to... I only say that because I feel like he is still, like... He doesn't even, like, really feel like himself. His own yeah, name seems coming foreign to terms with who and he strange. Is. Yeah. Um, he maybe talks to, or tries to, I don't know, engage, uh, I'm sorry, Brela? Brela. 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 Um, just cause she's like new, he feels new. So he's just kind of like, uh, what's your deal? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just trying to get into... Candle keep. Pickles told me you guys could get me in. Meanwhile, oh, Amy's up in the crow's nest. Oh, God. Two <laughs> <laughs> scars are far away from her as he can be. From Amy? <laughs> mm hmm. By the way, she didn't climb up, she flew up. <laughs> yeah. Which would give give Uskar dirty give her dirty looks. You all would have heard <laughs> a very high pitched, almost feminine scream coming from the helm as Amy was drifting up towards it, and you would hear Pickles say, Ghost! Oh! Oh. Then shout out, False alarm! Uskar would be like, Oh, it's just that stupid girl. Okay. Didn't mean to interrupt just conversation. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
totally good. Sweet. <laughs> so, what's your deal? Sorry, uh, what was that? What's your deal? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're uh, talking to me. Oh, yeah, I didn't know if we were going to, like, actually play this out or not. Um, you started it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, it appears I am back by, by the grace of Kelimvor. Bless you. Bless, bless his grace. You? Why? What? What? Why are you here? Because Pickles said he could get you guys could get me into uh, Candlekeep. Why are you trying to? They have the books. <laughs> Am I cutting out again? Just a little bit. Nope. We got the gist of it. Yep. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. So while just, you're go ahead. I just can't talk in this camp. <laughs> in the camp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. um Pickles would be showing you all a map of the Gripley village that he was provided as you make your way there. And no one can see that. Whole bunch of black. There it is. Well, that's a port. Um, so um, Pickles would actually say that that's the that is the crab pens. All that structure out here, you would say that you'll be docking. Well, he puts up his paws and air quotes docking somewhere outside of the um, somewhere outside of the crab maze, and uh, it's really the only way into the village is over those uh, walkways. He says hesitantly. Oh Jesus! So this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Fun. So, a thousand feet is the warlock thousand flies. Feet. Minimum. Okay. So, is this like mud flats here? So, Pickles would say that that area is the village proper. Okay. Lots of little huts, Ripley homes, things like that. Um, he says that the Pond Mother told him about three notable places. The Pond Mother's house, he says, you can't miss it. It's the only large and in charge looking structure in the place. And then he says the brood pools, likely to be a large concentration of the snake people there. And then the temple up here to the north. So, so the brood pools are on the other side of this stream or river. Or what? How? How big of a? Is this something we can walk across? Pickle says, "Yeah, the farther yeah, once you get a uh, once you get away from the breakwater, it should be shallow enough to walk." He said that the crab pens themselves aren't even that deep; only about six feet deep, but they're deepest for the crab pens. Ah, so this is shallow water area. And probably why that's as close as Pickles is able to get us yep. as well. Hope this is a shallow water, shallow draft vessel. Not that Alistair would know anything about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, after about a day of travel... Pickles does inform you all that
that you'll be arriving at the crab pens within the hour. It is the following morning. Uh, Rigel, you would have seen the sun rise. If that is important for Rigel for any reason. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's go, let's, gang. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. So Pickles would pull his boat up right alongside one of the Maybe. one of the walkways. Which where would you like him to drop you? Um, here. Yep. I was gonna say the same thing. Pickles does I, as be asked. more direct than any of the other ones. Is the closest one that actually gets us to land. Yep. I assume we're gonna like head to here and then head down along here toward the brood pools. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get your party token out here. Jesus. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's the path of travel, guys. Braylor's something... just going to request that if she falls in, someone come get her before she sinks all the way to the bottom. Uscar doesn't looks at her and says, Pickles, I don't Pickles, swim. Pickles said it was, it was, it was shallow water. Right. right. I think Deepest that, was only that, six feet. Yeah. That's taller than I am. It's, it's still going to be in trouble. But... Yeah, but it also has crabs with four foot long claws in them. Yeah. U so... Ushgar pulls out his rope and just ties it to himself and just kind of throws it to, to Brelo. Is this so I can save you or you can save me? Both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with, with an uncertain look on his face, uh, both. All right, I got you. Um, as we begin moving along these um, walkways, um, how far above the water are they? They, well, let me go ahead and describe it for you. So as you all make your way out onto these walkways, you see columns of stone with platforms built around them connected by rickety-looking gangways that touch the sea or, in some places, disappear beneath the frothing waves. So at any given point, these walk waves are no more than a foot or two above the ground. Most of the time, they're closer, if not submerged a little bit. In the distance, you can see the marshy shore. Dark shapes move around under the surface of the water, and flashes of red carapace can be seen breaking the water from time to time. Okay. Um, All right. You guys Alice will hear. There will use as uh, as soon as we reach the first place where his feet would get wet. Alistair will use elemental gift and will fly up about five feet above the walkway. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. Argoth. Argoth will be sent ahead. You know, a couple hundred feet along the path we're taking to. Um, invisibly um, to look out for um, anybody trying to set an ambush or anything like that. And when we're about eh, halfway to here, he will invisibly fly all the way directly to here and check to see if there's anything that we need to be worried about once we oh. get to all right, everybody. here. So... Let's go ahead, I know it's a little bit early, but let's go ahead and take our break, and then, because this whole thing kind of plays out as just one continuous stream, so we'll go ahead and take a little bit of an early break today, and when we come back, we will enter the crab maze proper. So, welcome back everybody. You all have made your way to the Gripley Village at the outskirts seaside, and you find yourselves making your way onto the crab platforms, and you have quite a bit of ways in front of you. 
the ocean water beneath your feet frothing, but not from waves, from the dozens, if not hundreds, of crabs milling about down there. So, this will be good. I need a group stealth check, please. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Because <laughs> you want to know what's exciting um, about that? Okay. Our, our tokens aren't out, so we can just roll this from our... Your character sheet, right? Sheets, yeah, okay. Stealth. Got it. That's a Wait. new thing for heavy armor. Um, do you want to make adsos? Accidentally... Oh, there it is. Cool. Nice, Rachel. Got an okay. eight and a fifteen. So, what's everyone's results? So let's take it from the top. Uh, Ace, what's your what's your result? Uh, that would be a eight at disadvantage. Nice. And so you got Brayla, Alistair. Twenty-one. Nathaniel. Twenty-one. Y'all are whispers. Rigel. <laughs> Twenty-six. Nice, nice. Let's do add so. Twelve. Twelve and oops. Seven. Nice, impressive, impressive <laughs> indeed. Ace, you need to set your character, your your D and D beyond. I mean, your beyond twenty setting to always roll twice. Wait, were were we at disadvantage there? Only uh, if you're wearing, armor. there's certain armors that provide decade Oh, disadvantage. sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay. They're ringing the dinner bell, so to say. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I didn't know if everybody was at it. So, as you are all Ooh. making your way through the foot, through the, through the rickety paths, what's our marching order? I'll go first. Okay. Are you sure? Oh man, I'm the stealthiest one now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Who's in the I'll back? Take up position. I'll take you up don't position. like it. You don't like it. Uh, Daniel, I'll take up position. I'll take up position behind Rigel. Okay. Uh, with a still defender, I guess behind me. I guess. I have to be near Uskar. With the <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll be in the middle. <laughs> I guess Adsa is going to bring up the rear because, um, and then behind him will be Alice there, but in the air. Okay. Where, where's Pickles? Pickles is with his boat. Oh, nice curse you, Pickles. <laughs> that kitty cat Dex would have been handy. <laughs> so, with a total result of 15, as you're all making your way across, let's see. Brayla and Uskar with for that matter. Take a little bit of a slip. The foot kind of sliding just off the water and splashing into the <laughs> frothiness of the sea beneath. Manage to pull your foot out very quickly. And there's a little about dinner plate sized crab just holding on to the boot. <laughs> Scar's gonna kick it as hard as he can, like kick his foot and attempt to send the crab flying as far as he can. It goes flying with a <laughs> splashes into the water. And as you do that, Uskar, you see about a dozen little tentacle little eye stalks pop up out of the water and swivel over to you. Oh no. <laughs> Scar just mm -hmm. kind of looks down and shrugs. We're going to roll advantage. Advantage? I mean, roll, roll initiative. <laughs> oh, everyone? Oh, yep. shit. Okay. Yeah. Uskar below. Uh, Dear Uskar. A question. With it being daylight, should the, should the map be that dark? No, I'll go ahead and turn the light on. I can't select my character. My token, either me or Adsa. Oh, it's because I have measure to a one. <laughs> That's better. Oh, well, I rolled a 19, but you don't have a token select. Good. Okay, come here. Eh. I can oh. to him. 
Ah, <sighs> stop. I rolled 19, but did not, but I did not have it selected, so let me... Stop it, you've woken her up twice now. Knock it off. Are I'm you kidding me? A blue dot indicator on Alistair to indicate that he is in flight. So there's a symbol for flight. It's the wings. Yep. Oh, is that on there real quick? I am friggin' plus seven, and I end up with ten. You get out. You got outrolled by Ushar. Hey, listen. Oh, no. You you're uh... still out of this world. So this is balance in the force. <laughs> balance in the force. Sure. Hey, uh, on our tokens, oh, what's that red circle supposed to be? Uh, it can be a number of things. Some people use it for um, some people use it for their temp HP. Some people use it for their passive perception. It can be whatever you want. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. I don't, I, I don't, I don't use it. Is the... <laughs> so you can do whatever you want to there. Thank you. Okay. Oh no. I got roll from my school defender too. So hold on. Okay. I'm gonna drag him out. And... Oh, so yeah, skill defender will be included in that. Uh. Those, those stealth checks going forward. Oh, oh these are like thing. floating docks. Yes. Oh, um, these are hard as hell to walk on. Yep. I need control of grumps, please. Grumps, you got it. Unacceptable. 15, it doesn't change it, Annie. Hey, you're too happy. Go to sleep. <laughs> you're too happy. You're good, Alistair. You got on. it. I'm trying to drag him onto the screen, and it's not letting me. Should be able to now. Ah, there we go. I'm getting Camino vibes for the fight. Nice. Is it supposed to be super dim? Super dim? It's not. It's not bright. It is cloudy, so it's not fully illuminated. Okay. 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 How dim is it for you? Oh yeah, yeah, it's not too. Bad. So that crab looks bigger than the others. Yes. It is, in fact, the one farthest to the north is considerably larger than its compatriots, and comes pulling itself up and out of the water, making a beeline for Nathaniel. Claws <laughs> clicking together as it moves, and it is going to pull itself up and onto the platform. Ah! Oh, and it's the one that got the eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And. Okay, I brought my crab smasher. Wait, did it just enter and leave Nathaniel's? Reach? No, it was. It, I, I pulled it up and it got to right here, but it doesn't want. It, we don't want it to be on the same spot as Nathaniel, so I moved it back one. Okay. Go to sleep. Okay. Go to sleep. Nathaniel, a giant claw reaches out for you. <laughs> that is. Ooh, a 24 to hit. Hmm. With its yeah, massive hit. claw, Nathaniel, it grabs you. Oh, and it rolled so high on its damage. Okay. So, Nathaniel, it reaches out one massively oversized claw and just clamps down on your midsection. Nathaniel, you are grappled, and as it squeezes shut and begins pulling you towards its mandibled face, you take 30 points of bludgeoning damage and are grappled. Okay. Oh! Um, the food here well, is so aggressive. I'm not used to controlling ads, so can I chronal shift that attack, yeah, please? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, chronal shift the attack. Second claw result is a 19. That would not hit. Okay, go ahead and take your health back. <laughs> that you was such a, higher... a huge hit. You have oh a higher AC God. than me. And if anyone sees high, it's up there. Holy shit. Carries a shield and What's stuff. Your... Are you at 20? Yeah. Not anymore, he's not. He's... He didn't, no, yeah, I mean, he AC... Hit. What's his AC? Oh, uh, yeah. It's only with my shield out. There you go. I need to get my uh, full plate armor. Luckily, that thing only has one attack. <laughs> Steel Defender's turn. <sighs> Holy Ennis. Yeah, he big. He big and scurry. Uh, he's going to try to ease around here. And he's going to do his little force and powered wind on this thing. Does a 14 hit it? Does not. Bounces harmlessly off of its Kyropest. Okay. But 
the main thing is to be close enough to try to deflect some stuff from that bad boy, so... Right. <laughs> um... Nathaniel, I think we're gonna have to put the Steel Defender there. It would still be within range, okay. but that would technically occupy the same space as the, as the crowd. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and pull the grid out a little bit more detail. Yeah. Okay. See yourselves if you're not in a grid. This is this is a large creature, so the size is a bit off. Too. There we go. Yeah, that. Okay. Uskar, you're up. All right. There's nothing really in Uskar's reach. Let me see something. Give it a minute. You could well, what... always move up here and tag team the big guy. Yeah, Uskar is gonna get up here, and he's gonna use his ring of ram. Nice. It's a strength Two, save, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it is a... On? It's an attack, actually. Um, hold on here. I'll put it up. So, um, plus seven on a hit. I do 2d10 force damage and push it back five feet. And okay. I can add five to the... Um, alternatively, you could spend... Try and break an object, you can see, but I'm not worried about that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna ring a ram it. Yeah. I am a lamb. Eleven does not hit. <sighs> what happens when you try to use magic? <laughs> He's convinced himself that the ring just gives him just is just really, really strong. Some really strong punches. Right. <laughs> That's a sheep. I just noticed you put a sheep in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that 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 was that was my day today. I was I was returning a very 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 large ram back to his owner. He's nice. been here for, right. for breeding season. <laughs> all right, and that's all he can do then. Nathaniel, I'm uh. Wait, hold on. Nathaniel's Is that? I'm sorry. Um, Ring of Ram is an attack, yep. but is it take up both my... No, because it's an attack. I still get a second attack, don't I? You use an action to expend one of the three charges. So no, that oh, yeah, is you're your right. action. You're right. Thank you. What, Nathaniel? Nathaniel is going to let his crossbow dangle on in its tether as he pulls out his morning star and shield. He did not like this thing trying to rip them apart like that. Right, whenever a chrono shift happens, I like to imagine like it's everyone sees Nathaniel just get absolutely just destroyed by this crab and then it all just reverses. I forgot about it. Yep. Yeah. 14's not going to do it, Nathaniel. Okay, then we're going to take a sec or my second swing. 15 hits. Okay. 15 hits, so we'll see how much. So we'll him for at least eight points of damage. Okay. <laughs> okay. It hits. Doesn't do a whole lot to this thing's thick, thick hide, though. Hmm. Disturbing. Okay. Rayla. Brayla's Can Brayla first initiative. Do... <laughs> Can Brayla do some, like, excuse me, pardon me things? Or, or is this thing totally surrounded and I can't get up there? As long as you don't um, end on somebody's face, you're good to go. These There's blacked literally... out spaces are um, little platforms. They're raised up and over. They're kind of like sheds built into the built onto the platforms. But what you could do is step into Nathaniel's space, attack, and then move back, is what he's saying. Yeah. But you have something next to you, so if you move, you're going to get yeah. a hit. Yeah, just, just attack what's next to you. Okay, cool. Uh, then a little, little itty bitty there uh, is going to get smash boxed by my work. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh no, I did the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did the wrong damage. Thing. Yeah, I know what I hit. 19. 
Okay, 19 hits. All right, could you, do you want to just use the the six? Sure. Since I fucked up. Crab guts go flying, but it's still alive. Well, we can't have that, so. Do the thing. Do the thing. Sorry, hold on. Twenty-two certainly hits. For another six points, it goes down. Sinks into the frothy water. You can see dozens of other crabs eating it as it sinks down below. The little ones are easy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the giant one snaps at Nathaniel again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you should move. You Anything look breakable. Else, no, she's just telling Nathaniel how breakable he looks. Alright. Atso. Misty step. Misty step from Atso, okay. To nice. here. Okay. <laughs> um and then <laughs> Hold on, I missed did my hit points. Fireball, <laughs> big guy. Ooh. Ten's gonna miss. It is, in fact, going to miss. All right, anything else from Atso? Misty Step, uh, Firebolt. We got to have his Tressum fly over, but his Tressum will fly to, like, here. Okay. And give the help back to the next person that attacks the right. big crab. Brings us around to Rigel. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, bear with me, folks. This is my first uh, move as a first Gloomstalker. Time. You have and 30 there's... seconds. You have yeah. three <laughs> <laughs> I've been like studying all the things I can do, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> if you have any. Much. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Initial well, move, bonus action, Hunter's Mark. Well, I have Favored Foe as well, and I have a bonus action spell that I think I'm going to take, so I think I'm going to start. Um, oh, God. I think I'm going to start by using Zephyr Strike? Yeah, Question? That's the one. That's, uh, that's a good idea, right? Because I get, bonus, I get to on. give myself advantage on one weapon attack on my turn, right? Yes. Bonus action, Zephyr Strike, move out of range, shoot three times, yes. And then I can... Um, save your favorite foe. Trust me, just save it. You move like the wind. Da, 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 da. My movement doesn't... So I can, like, attack, 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 and then get out, right? Yep. Well, I'll get out <sighs> first if you want to get it range, I believe. You use your oh, bow, right? If you're Jeez. using a lo your longbow, does more no. damage than. No, my my rapier does more damage because I'm a dueler. I'm a dueler. Huh? And oh, I also, are... I also have spike growth, which I've been thinking about. I yeah, spike growth is not going to help us. Yeah. The water all that much. Yeah. Hinder you all more than anything else. Save the spike okay. for later. Yeah. So, um. Yes, so I'm going back to what I was. I uh, so was thinking so I, was I wouldn't do. do if you're a, do you so if you're gonna be doing melee zephyr strike isn't gonna help you because you're gonna run away, run back in, and then continue wasting spells. You're better off using your first spell on hunter's mark so you have it already, and then if you have to run away, then use zephyr strike. Yeah, zephyr strike's definitely uh, better I, if you plan on going range. Yeah. Ah, uh, but but I don't have to use I don't have to use a spell to use favored foe favored foe doesn't i don't think it does as much damage it doesn't it doesn't it's only 1d4 but i also it it's like free damage i don't have yeah. to use a bonus action i don't do anything it's not a spell so it's awesome so i can cast zephyr strike get out of all this mess attack a bunch of times like bounce which is dope which is exactly what i'm gonna do okay go for it and we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. Um, 
learning curve. So casting Zephyr Strike as a bonus action. Okay. So that's happened. <laughs> um Place of advantage on one weapon attack, and I have Dread Ambusher, so I. Oh, you got a max roll on the damage on that too, nice. But you don't have five levels of Ranger yet. Never mind. I do. Oh, then you should have two attacks. You'll have three attacks then. I do have. Yes, exactly. So I'm gonna attack the big guy. Yeah. Uh... Advantage. Oh, Sorry, this is so stressful. Oh, I have good advantage. man, take your time. I'm the first one. Well, yeah, I guess I can pick. But yeah, you, you get to pick. Are you taking advantage on this first one? Mm, no. Okay. 10 miss. Figure that would miss. Let's try again. 17 hits. Dope. Let's try again. 26 is also a hit. So Ooh. you have to add the 8 damage from Zephyr Strike plus your last attack has another 1d8 on it. Is that from Favor Foe? No, it's from uh, his um, my brain is fried. From being a Gloomstalker at level 3 when you get oh, that right, extra right. attack. Dread right. Ambush. Dread Ambush. Ambush. It's a 1, 1d6 or 1d8. I don't remember. Uh, Yep, I'm looking that God, there are so many things. Yeah, especially but starting my... a new character at level six, like well, it's a lot. Oh my Loomstalker god! Loomstalker is my favorite class in the entire game, so I know it. <laughs> yeah, so dread ambusher, blah 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 blah. Um, if you take the attack action, you can make one additional attack, dealing an extra one d eight. So I'm dealing a one d eight on that last attack that hits, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got seven. So that's another. All right. So that is a total of 16. 29. Well, I, I, still, I, I still have my favored foe, which is which I am 1D4. going to 1d4. So I will add that. Is that on every attack or just one? No, no once, that's... once once a time. Once so a... that's the big difference between Dread, right. that uh, favored foe and Hunter's, Hunter's Marks. Every attack um, favored foe is just the first time you hit them. Right. But. Uh, favor foe is just a nice little it's yeah, like it's pepper, free. pepper on my yeah it's free shit when I can cast Zephyr Strike free. and now um cause I cast peg. Zephyr Strike uh I can just dip out because I don't incur opportunity attacks and you my speed is like 60 60. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, bounce over here. Okay. Yeah. Alistair. God, sorry, guys. No, you're good. You're awful. good. I'm no the worries. So. I'm gonna move to here so that I'm directly over his scar, but like 15 feet in the air. Okay. He's just taunting um, him. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and Agarth will move to here and give me the help action. And so between um, Grumps giving help action and Argoth giving help action, I'll get the advantage on both of these Eldritch Blasts. Nice, nice. So 22. 22 hits. For 13. And a 21, 21 for, nine. for nine. And between Crusher Feet and both of those Eldritch Blasts with Repelling Blast, he's moved 25 feet straight away from me. Nice. Do we get opportunity? I was trying to move him quite straight toward Adsel. <laughs> Didn't think that through. Oops. <laughs> okay. That's it for me. And now... The crabs. <laughs> <laughs> you were and waiting. I have to step away for just a second. I'll be back. Okay. You have time. Hypothetically? <laughs> yeah? Could Rayla use uh, Uskar as a meteor hammer? 
God. I feel like he's too big. Okay. Maybe like if maybe if you were like running a barbarian and had some feats and stuff like that. But what's your strength score? <laughs> Uh, 17 right Yeah, I feel like that would require like at least a 20 in strength and a really hefty athletics check. Something Sam, to look forward to in the future there, Uskar. Uskar's like 170, 200 pounds, plus the 160 pounds of shit he's got with him. <laughs> right? He would be an amazing improvised weapon. He would say. not like that. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to smite a, an enemy with... A living person, don't you? <laughs> Star would hate that even more. <laughs> right, channel the divine, the divine energy through Uskar as he hits. Smite. <laughs> Is a dwarf a melee weapon if you swing him hard enough? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Y'all are just trying to get Uskar to leave. Goodness. No. <laughs> okay. So. Sorry. They attack. We have two coming for Brela. It is a 19. Ooh, and a crit. Yeah, it hits. Uh, on the one that crits her, is that the, is that the one that's adjacent to the still defender? Mm, the second one, it would have been this one right here. Okay, cannot do anything about that. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, on the one. Does the 19 hit? Yeah. Is that one where the defender can deflect it, or...? It's right here. The one up okay, here is on for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. Those two are out of range. Okay. Okay. Brayla, you take a grand total of 12 bludgeoning damage. Furthermore, you are grappled by two giant crabs. These two. Okay. Nathaniel, you have one, two coming after you. It is a 19 and a 16 to hit you. Both of those miss. Wait, wasn't Nathaniel grappled by the big crab, so shouldn't he got pushed back from the Forced blast? movement uh, ends a grab. a chronal shift. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Oh, and, chronal uh, shift, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Those two miss Nathaniel. One is going for the steel defender with a 20 to hit. That'll hit him. Two bludgeoning, and the Steel Defender is now also grappled by a crab. Okay. Okay. Brings us to Citizen Snips over here. Um, <laughs> um quick, quick, quick question. Uh -huh. I'd like to retcon one thing, because I'm not used to playing Adso. Um, I was assuming he had shield. He does not. He would have cast Mage Armor before he even stepped foot off of the boat. Okay, got it. So, which gets his armor class up to 15. Yeah, as okay. opposed to 12. <laughs> so. Okay. And Alistair is up in the air, right? Yep, I'm up in the air. I'm like 15 feet above the, the water surface. Yeah, it's going to go for Adso. I don't see how yeah. it has any other choice. Nope. It's a 26 to hit Adso. Um, yeah, because I didn't think through what I was doing. I should have, I thought I was blasting it away from everybody, not toward Adso, but yeah. Adso um, takes 26 bludgeoning and is grappled, unless he does something about it. Um, I don't think he yeah, can. He's gonna, yeah, but, yeah, no, he can. Um, because it's been his turn since yes, he used his yes, reaction. Okay. So, um, yeah, so he is going to cast Silvery Barbs and make that guy go again. And he's going to give himself advantage on the next thing he does. <laughs> so what does Silvery Barbs read? Take the lower of the two rolls? Yes. That's good because the second one crit. So he still hit me for how much damage was it? 26 bludgeoning and he is grappled. Yep. 
John's gonna love watching this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screw that up completely. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Steal defender. I'm a defend. Mm. Well, since he is grappled, he's kind of limited in what he can do. So uh, he is going to try to smack this thing that has him grappled. I'm assuming an eight does not hit. It does not. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all he can do at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Who's car? Sorry. <laughs> it was the gift. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Very aggressively eating crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. So I was going to move over here. And... If you were actually having crabs right now, that would be... <laughs> I'm also not a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> that I is make shocking. no assumptions. So I'm gonna do uh, one of these with Adso. Okay. Bait and switch, nice, nice. Bait and switch. So if you could move him to where I was, um, I'm gonna roll that superiority die, which I don't remember what my die is right now. Yeah, you didn't, we have been you running with waste. the force you movement didn't need to waste that. <laughs> What's that? You didn't need to waste that. Adso's gonna get out. Kill I thing. know, but I I want the uh, boosted AC for me. Mm. Fair enough. So, okay. give I'm myself... You're give it to Adso. Don't bother giving oh, it God. to Adso. God, no. Uh, I'm over with a giant crab by myself. Um, so I have a plus six to my AC for now. Nice, nice, you'll need it. So I'll take that 25 AC for a minute. Oh, and yeah, well, he is. Uh, hey, folks, we're having to reboot our internet right quick, so if we fade out, we'll be right back on. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is going to take two uh, lovely swings at the ginormous crab. Swing one. 26 hits. Four, eight damage. And then, hey, double nice, roll nice. for another 10. And then he is going to accent surge and hit it again. 15 just hits. Boom. Take that. Hit. There nice, you go. Good hit. There you go. That's good damage. Okay. The crab is finally beginning to show some signs of damage. It's, um... All he's going to do, because I don't have any cool bonus actions. Nathaniel. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I believe we are back, and it is rebooting, and okay, we're back where we need to be. I'm, uh... Uh... I am going to take a swing at this crab to the right underneath me. Okay. Okay. First. I'm assuming a 26 hits. 26 certainly hits. I'm just not seeing it yet. Oh. Let's roll the, that beautiful damage. Baby girl. Uh, eight points of damage on that one. <laughs> Is anyone else seeing, not uh, seeing uh, I, Nathaniel's roll pop up? I am not. Huh. No. There we go. There they there are. Is. There they are. Okay. They're just laggy a little bit. Okay. I'm assuming that that critter is still standing, correct? Uh, after eight points, yes. Okay. Let's go for shot number two. Oof. 17 hits. Oh, and let's see what we get with another swing. Yeah, because Battlesmith gets extra attack, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Ooh, 12 will do it. Okay, so there's one dead crab. Uh, 
Okay, so I kind of look this next one and what I'm going to do is move up here one step, which shouldn't provoke opportunity attack because I did not leave that one's range. And I will wait for my next turn. <laughs> Rayla. All right, I would like to hit a crab, please. <laughs> uh, I'm going to swing at the one directly south of me. Hit. Sorry, got pulled back up. I gotta get used to using the other one now. Oh, 22 hits. Yes. Four. Hmm. Yes. Nice, 11 points. Good stuff. Still standing, um, but it's hurt. Hmm. Well, she's got another attack. <laughs> yes. I'm going to hit the same one again, please. Okay. One, he certainly does it. And any damage you do to it will murder this crab. <laughs> I just, when I, when I smash it, I just want, like, you know those little stress dolls that you squeeze <laughs> in our eyes pop? <laughs> That's what I want yep. to happen. I'm picturing Brayla with those little wooden mallets they give you at the crab restaurants. <laughs> Back! <laughs> but with spikes on them. <laughs> right? Anything else? Uh, yes. Who's next? It is... Adso gets Bless. Or is that a more, more than one person kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, Bless, I believe, goes up to three people, and it is for saving throws, and... That's a full action as well. Yeah, you can't... Oh. You can't. Yeah, you can Sorry, cast yeah. plus and attack in the same round. Then that's round. all I'm doing. Sorry, guys. Okay. Adso's up. Adso is up. So, um, how tall are these little huts that are, like, blocking our vision? About four feet. Okay. Um, Adso is now, after casting um, Misty Step a second time, this time actually using one of his second level spell slots. Since most of you can see over him. Um, he'll be right there on top of it. Right. Um, and then he grumps will fly over to this nasty clacky thing and give him the help action and he will cast I don't think this guy probably has a very good saving throw, so he is going to cast Hold the Dead on it for 23 Necrotic, DC 16 Wisdom oh, oh, save. Which, which one? The big the guy. Big guy? Nice. Yeah, I didn't need the, the trust him to give me, so the trust him to give me help to somebody else. It probably gets a 2 Alistair. on its Wisdom save. Yeah, so 23 Necrotic. <laughs> Anything else? That's it for Adso. Rigel. Damn. That is tense. Um, okay. Um, need help with little stupid crabs. Uh, the Still Defender has one on him. Uh, Paladin on. has one breath with her. There's one in front of Nathaniel, and, there, and there's the big son of a gun in front of Uskar. Yeah. Well, for choice. <laughs> Let me see here. After that last heck, now I'm suddenly thinking maybe I should <laughs> also toll the dead, big bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to toll the dead on the big bad. Save result is a one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's still alive. Yep. Still alive. Son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move a little closer into the melee here. Uh, but I'll take my turn there. I'll stare. 
Okay, so thanks to Grumps, I have advantage on this first Eldritch Blast at it, so an 18. 18 hits. For 14 force damage. 14. Damn near does it. Not quite, though. And Argoth will move over to give me the help action on the next one. And at 25 hits. for and another. 9 and will do it. Yep. Actually, it's only 6, not 9. 6 only get still does on one attack. And but it also gets like flung 25 <laughs> feet, you know, flying through the air. Um, yeah, that's it for me. You all see dozens of crabs beginning to foam up out of the water and cover the giant crab, eating it as yeah, it sinks beneath the waves. Yeah, because that's what crabs do. So gross. They are the ultimate scavengers. Uh huh. I have actually yeah, seen that happen gross. once. Or what? It was either it was either I was a kid. It was either Mexico or Hawaii. But I remember, I vividly remember seeing one crab get just absolutely devoured by like five or six others. It was probably traumatizing. Now that I'm thinking back at it, they are delicious with drawn butter, though. I they will are. Say that. <laughs> okay. Anything else from Alistair? That's it for me. Okay. Back to the little crabs. One is going to try to take a bite out of Brela. It is only a 10 to hit, though. Next one goes for the Steel Defender. That is a 22 to hit the Steel Defender. That'll hit. For two bludgeoning. Nathaniel. It is only six to hit you. Yeah, it does that not do crap. <laughs> that brings us to the Steel Defender. Well, time for him to try to kick this thing again. 21 hits. Oh, that would hit. Come on now, smooth. Oh, come on now. Don't freeze him now, Gizmo. Uh, How much do we hit him for? Yeah. Seven force damage. Not the best, but and I think that's it for the time being. Okay. The scar. All right. Um. He is um. Pretty sure not able to get anywhere close to any of these guys. You can get to yeah. the, there. I can go there. Perfect. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, motherfucker! And he's just gonna swing at this one. <laughs> 14 does not do it. Boo. Well, he's gonna try again. Stick him again. 26 certainly does. Boom for 12. 12 kills that one. Hey! Hmm. You okay. little hard ass. You you can't see it, MK, but I'm making the how dare you make that fun face. <laughs> I'm suddenly Oscar on this day only looks like a little like like he, I imagine him as a South Boston like a uh. five foot six South Boston guy who just like really kicks hard ass. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, but you get a couple Dunkin' Donuts in this guy, and he is dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's score anything else? That... Nathaniel, you're up. Okay, uh, I'm going to move down here to where there's a crab grabbing our new paladin for him. Okay, and. Let's see about smacking this one. Twenty-seven hits. Cool. So let's see how much damage. Ooh, eleven. Uh, eleven damage. 
Levin will take that one out. Okay, and... So I moved 15 there. So I'm going to try to move... Get to there. <laughs> 5, 10, 15. I'm going to try to smack this one that's bothering my steel defender. When he hits. Get away from him. I made him crab free. Yeah. You're trying to infest. Eight will do that one in. And I think that is all of the crabs. Man, oh man. Killed it. Woo! And with that, we head back to this map. And congratulations, everybody. You have made it to there. Yeah. <laughs> um. The audacity. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, does it mean have... any healing, or do I, or does that tell you to drink so this good. potion of healing? I don't, I don't think we have. Well, we have a paladin. Uh, I mean, I'm more of a I save you from imminent death healer. Right. So, that says at twelve. I do have he, cure needs, he needs about. So, do you want to spend a first level spell slot to? Do a cure wounds on Atso, or shall he drink a potion of healing? Healing potion. Uh. I can. Play on I can also do a. Yeah. Up to y'all. We should have probably yeah. bought more healing potions, right? With what? Stop it. Do we not have money? Not much. I do. I have 275 gold. Oh, this guy. Sitting on his little pile of gold. Money. Until they buy plate armor. <laughs> well, no, I'm getting plate armor. Does Adso need? Did you ask? Adso needs did all she, the healing did he needs. Did she just say Adso? Twelve. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he needs what? Twelve? No, he's at twelve. So he's he's down twenty six. Well, he can't have 26. That's a lot. And that was only our first walk. Right. We, we just need to get him where, like, one hit won't just take him out. <laughs> health potion. Health potion. Just okay. use a health, health, health potion. potion. Come on. That's fine. Nice. Um, use the second one. I, yeah, I accidentally hit that. I don't know why. Well, twice. I thought I only hit it once. But, okay. So, nine. Okay. So right, he, he can he can survive a little bit now. I need everybody to make those stealth checks again as you continue moving along these pathways. <laughs> MK, do you have yeah. Pass Without a Trace? I do. Would um, everybody like me to cast <laughs> Pass Without a Trace? Let's roll our rolls and then see if we need it. Uh, you have to make you, uh, you can't do it oh, after the fact. You got to do it first. Well, you have two people that roll at disadvantage, so. You know what? I got past without a trace for a fucking reason, and this seems like a good goddamn time to use it. Okay. Okay. So I'm casting it. That would so, be against plus 10. We have 32. We have a 20. We have a 21. We have a 21. Uh, well, the 31, because add 10. 31. Because it's, it's not that we get stealth at advantage. We right. get plus 10. 32. <laughs> okay, Steel Defender. That last for, and that lasts for an hour, too, so... Yep. Crap, I don't have a, his token selected, so I'm having to figure out how to... Mm. And Alice is flying. I don't know if that gives him a bonus on the type of stealth we're doing or not. Uh, you know, I think that points. would I think that would just make it so, so Alistair just doesn't have to roll this. Well, I'd... Okay. So Alistair's rolls will not count for or against party stealth checks. But this is this is already far and away enough to pass this one. So yeah, let me get my go for the steel defender going. Sorry. No worries. Here we go. Dude, thank you for reminding me about that spell. 
So I play I've Rangers a lot. <laughs> I've, never, I've never played this class. I've never had that spell at my disposal. But it's I one knew of my faves. It. Yeah. It's and it, and it lasts for an hour, wow. so it's going to be useful. And I'm really wow. glad to know that you that you um, have spike growth because spike growth is really useful to me, but it's a really big waste of a warlock spell slot. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Spike growth is not useful to me. <laughs> I I once I I don't know. Give me if I already told you this. I once played this like. Uh, I got control over a character in a game that was the ranger who had spike growth, and I was the bard. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I got to lay down spike gro growth for myself, and then just, you know, just send just... everybody through it like, for the next like couple minutes. It was so awesome. All right, everyone, so this will go pretty quick since we have the uh, Pass Without a Trace up, but let's go ahead and get another round of stealth checks for everybody except for Alistair. Boy. Basically, you've got to do one for every grid you move through. Sure, sure, sure. So oh, plus 10 to everybody. Oh, God, okay. I'm so Glad that sorry. Was up. So we have a 14. We have a 23. We Ooh. have a 13. We have a 35. <laughs> we have a 12. <laughs> If you don't knock it off, I'm going to come back there. And we have a 20. Okay. How many checks was that total? Six? Okay. You guys see a few of the little eyes popping up and taking notice of you. I don't want emerge from the water, though. Uh-oh. Let's do it again. Which route are you guys taking? Wait, we're here now? Okay. Up. Up. You want to go this way? Yep. Yes. Okay, let's get another round of checks. All right, boss. And Argoth is going all, invisibly, going all the way to the breakwater. Okay. Or, in that what you call that, the breakwater? Yep. 24, 27, 24, 32. These are good rolls. Yeah, these are good ones, okay. We need two more. I'll get up. I like my defender. Ray, what kind of armor are you wearing? Are you wearing heavy armor? Chain mail. Okay, so you'll be making these at disadvantage. Yes. Okay. So we need one more. Another stealth check. Who are we missing? Who are we missing? Oh. Uskar, is that seven there, your new one? The seven three, yes. Okay. I mean, I did not count that one yet. I'm assuming you're just heading this way now? Yes. Let's do it again. Oh my god. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> Could it be... Okay. Pass that trace here. makes this a lot better for you all. Yeah, no shit. How... Hey. Oh, still the fender sucked. Oh well. Okay, one more. Are we missing? Oh, mine, hold on. Okay, there we go. Oh my god, so close. Alright, you make it there, you make it to the next one. Let's go again. <laughs> you were literally, like, if anyone had gotten one number lower, you would have failed that one. This is so fun. That's better. Let's see how. The defender does. Oh, Rigel, what are you doing, bud? It's, it's still okay. a 22. So I've got Uskar. That's at least going with pants. Okay. And then that's 28 for Uskar and 18 for the Steel Defender. That definitely passes. Okay. I was actually 25 for Uskar because he has disadvantage. Okay, that's still, that's still well above what you need. Here we go again. So we need one, two, three, four, five more of these total before we're done. Oh my god. 27! My lord. 
Come here. Wow. What if I didn't have this spell? It, it would, would be, be it would go like it would go poorly. Twenty <laughs> battles. <laughs> oh my god. There is a maximum there like, is a maximum number that you can fight. Just so you, so I was just like, um yeah. Okay, <laughs> so who are we missing? We are still missing there's that, okay. Uh it's coming through. Should be one base. Okay. And okay. I'm putting a marker in this time. Thank you, that's actually helpful. Alright, let's go again. Wee. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> um so what has Argoth found when he got up here examining to the south and to the north of the Whoa. breakwater? One second, as soon as I get this calculated. Please like pause we, for math. Looks like we might be in for more crab. Crabtasticness. Oh no, we got crabs. Okay, looks like we need one more. Let's hope for a really high one, everybody. Sorry, who's waiting on? Are you waiting on me? Uscar, Adso, Brela, and Nathan. Yep, we are waiting yep, on. Rigel. Yeah, good luck. Ah, we sorry. need a really high roll to avoid another crab encounter. Oh fuck. Okay. No pressure. You know, except all the pressure. Oh, ho, that counts. Three. That is Three. 33. Yeah! <laughs> that does get you there. All right, good stuff. Go again. Hey, do we need to put another marker in? Yep. Yep. I got it. Two more. You're at the breakwater. Okay, uh, yeah, the speaking of the breakwater. Argos. So, when Argoth okay. gets to the breakwater... We have a battle coming up. When Argoth gets to the breakwater, they see several humanoid forms moving about the village, much taller than the Gripply were. That's about it. By the village, you mean here? Mm. Yes. That sucked. Okay. So there's nothing like waiting to attack us as we come. No, off there the is nothing waiting to ambush us. Okay, that's what I was worried about. Do they look like I'm slimy here. snake bastards? I am throwing a freaking guidance on myself because that was terrible. Oh, cool! We've already got everybody's rolls up there. Good stuff. Uh... Argoth will continue across the bay and get a closer look at these whatever it is moving about the village 13 from that we've got 19 from adso we've got 19 from the skill defender we've got 22 from brela and 15 from nathaniel who's are we missing we are missing no missing Rigel. okay are you missing another one for me god sorry uh <laughs> here you go Second. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, once again, Rigel saves the day with a high roll to get you all to avoid <laughs> another encounter. All right, last one, everybody. Good luck. Sick. Off to a good start. Oof. Now uh, these are all above 10. When you add Ooh. 10 to those, that's all good. Yeah. Okay. That was good. I don't think, yeah, I don't, there's no way in hell you all would have made that all, made it all the way here without Pass Without a Trace, but you all do make it to the breakwater. On all the heavy armor. Unreal. So, one, spell. one spell slot. <laughs> yeah. Argoth um, is trying to determine um, whether or not it is an easier trip to go south or north. Right. Um, once you I do get to the breakwater, there are several little rowboats tied to the, to the eastern end of it. Um, Argoth scouting out for you there, Alistair would see that the snake people are 
for lack of a better word, lazy and passive as hell. A few of them are bloated. They have giant bulges in their stomachs. Some of them are just leaning up against huts. Any of those bulges <laughs> frog shape? <laughs> Probably. <sighs> I'm being triggered by this uh, description. <laughs> Just me for the What you're saying is we can take rowboat straight across <laughs> or we can walk south. Hey, row, row, row your boats. Yeah, absolutely. Washington crossing the Delaware. Let's go. How long has it taken us to get across this crab maze? Um, that's a good question. Probably the better part of an hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then I'm not flying anymore. Secondly, if we go across with the rowboats, do we also want Pass Without Trace active for that as well? I'm happy to cast it again. It's only a second level. The second level? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not like a full caster but I have yeah. lots of I have I have quite a few spell slots between ranger and um cleric Mhm mm The yeah, baby <laughs> That sounds like a very happy baby I'm doom guide I'm, uh, it probably I wish I wish I was as as excited oh, about anything as that kid, <laughs> that baby, is excited about, I don't know, whatever it's yeah. doing. <laughs> she was looking at her sister. I'm, uh... Ah, that's enough. Is there straight across, guys? Yeah. Rowboats? Hell yeah. That's, that's what I would say. Ushgar checks the, the rope to make sure it's Normandy. tight. And... Normandy, baby. Ushgar checks yeah, his rope to make sure well it's nice and buddy. tight. All right. All right, buddy. So, you do make it across to the docks without incident. With Alistair's familiar Argoth being able to give you a little bit of heads up on where the snake people are. They are wandering about the village. Some of them in loose groups. None of them you could necessarily call patrols. Um, every now and then you see one of them kind of just harassing one of the frog people. There's a few of the Gripply wandering around as well. They're carrying loads on their backs, transporting things to and from other huts, things like that. Huh. Good job. <laughs> so what do y'all want to do? So we've landed on the beach and we see snake people basically... I am assuming you're doing your best to stay out of sight. Once you actually begin moving oh. into the village, we'll make another group stealth check. Yeah, definitely. Where is the temple? The There's the village just here. I think this is the temple village. Is here. And, so and the I'll show you all there. real quick. Um, they were able to give you directions from the maps, so I'll go ahead and. Yeah. So Pickle said Pond Mother's Brooding <laughs> Pool, cool. brood, brood, brood Pond, or yeah, Brood Pool. And then temple up here, he said. Yeah. Um, do we want to try to cross the river south? Um, this is only, I mean, it's a hundred feet. It's not, not, it's not nothing. Oh, we can just take the boats to here if that's what we want to do. Yeah. Question is, do you want to go to the Pond Mother's home or the Brood Pools first? What did we need to each of those again? I'm sorry. So first, do we want to go to the Pond Mother's home first or the Brood Pools first? The I thought we had to go to a temple. temple. Yeah, eventually you have to go to the do, temple. But but I think... stuff in between us and the I... temple. Yeah, there's a there's a significant number of snake people wandering around, so I'm guessing that um, we need to kill them um, all. Take oh gosh, out okay, let's check out the pond mother. Here. She might have some insight for us. Well, the well, pond mother we left in Baldur's Gate. This is her house, but 
if it's the biggest house there, chances are um, somebody important someone... has said, oh, this is a nice yeah. place to to coil up and shed skin. Okay, so should we try to stealth as close as close to the pond mother's home as possible? I can cast Pass Without a Trace again, and we can all do our best to sort of at least get as close as we can. Yeah, rather than maybe so. fight fight snake people for the next a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Will you still have a second level yeah. spell slot for casting spike growth if you do pass without trace again? I will. Well, okay. no. This no. will this will consume my second level spells. Yeah, that that's fine. I was just curious. But you know, pass good. without trace is good so use. good. Yeah, it really is. It's awesome. That's why I took it. <laughs> no, a ranger should always take that spell. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Best ranger spell in the book. Yeah. Lead the way, okay. oh stealthy gloomstalker. All right, then I will cast Pass Without a Trace again, which we will have for the next hour. And uh, let's start making our way through this, uh, which I assume is a swampy ass jungle. Yep, it is a swamp. It is a. Um, lots of pu lots of puddles lying around, domed mud brick buildings that the Gripply uses homes and storage facilities. Um, there's carapaces and claws of giant crabs feature he featured heavily in all the architecture. Okay. Um, we want to hug this like southern shore here. You think? Yeah. That's just my thinking. I don't know. That's my thinking as well. Um, Sean, Carl, yeah. done. Um, as um, so through Argroth's eyes, I'm sure I've gotten a, a at least um a really good look at some of the snake people. Are they all completely like snakeified, or is some of them humanoid enough that my disguised self can make me look like one of them? There is a thorough variety, various different types. There are some humanoids with just barely a snake-like feature here and there. There are all kinds of different variations and combinations of half snake, half person. Um, there are several little squat figures that look more look more reptilian than humanoid. They seem to be being ordered around by the bigger ones, but they're also ordering around the Gripply. Oh, there's Gripply as well. Yes, there are a few surviving Gripply running around. Mm -hmm. um, basically working as servants or slaves for the Yuan-T. So... Um, I will warn my compatriots, but Alistair is going to assume the form of one of the humanoid snake people. Okay. That way, if 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 for any reason he's spotted, he should blend in. If things pop off, you can run off and. Yep. Start a yeah. new life as you want to. No. <laughs> I, I I always have a <laughs> yeah. live live your new life while we are eaten by <laughs> snake people. I, All right, cool man. They're kind of cool, always man. <laughs> <laughs> so on your way over to the to the uh, pod mother's home, let's go ahead and see another group stealth check. I get like advantage on it since I'm a snake person. Not that it matters. Two lots. <laughs> the seven and the one look so similar on D and D Beyond that I panic every time I hit a seven. <laughs> God, God damn it, Ad. So, yeah. <sighs> no, Ad so is going to re-roll that time he, shift. Yeah, he's going to time <laughs> shift that. <laughs> if I could turn back time. I, I missed it. He... When John's not here, I, I'm I'm sad. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this is this is that says re-roll of his stealth. So twenty one instead okay. of thirteen. <laughs> okay. So staying low between the huts, hiding out behind dips in the terrain, 
do manage to make your way over to the Pawn Mother's home. It's a what does large dome shaped building. Ooh. Go ahead. What does we Argos made it all the way there? See through any windows or whatever. Um, most of the homes are empty. There is signs of violence in several of them. Um, the scattered Yuan T are ordering about um, the Gripply. Every so often you see one just strike a Gripply. Things like that. They are not being treated well by the Yuan T that have taken over the village. Does Argoth enter into any of the homes? No. As we approach the pond, is Argoth home, still a goblin or is he a quasi again? Imp, you mean? You mean imp? No, he's I, 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 actually he, he he's staying as an imp because the imp gives the same magic resistance as the the quasi does, um, and its shape changes a better raven instead of. I didn't think the can... imp familiar variant gave a. Nope. The... Same thing. I checked. Really? I thought it was just a quasi. And the imp has and the imp has devil's sight and can fly in its standard form. <laughs> okay. Wait, so okay, so we're at the hut and we can see these frog people being brutalized. Is this correct? There are yeah, there are frog people that are being just no no one's like committing murder out in front of you all or anything like that. It's more like a frog person is moving too slow, so gets beaten by one of the Yuan things like that. But yeah. Is that like really, really close to us, or like just like we're seeing that at, like around the village? You're seeing it around the village. Okay. So at the Pond Mother's home, are there like guards at the door or anything like that? There are not. It's a very large dome shaped building made of mud, mud, uh, mud bricks and wood. There, yeah, there is an entrance out front that is closed, but does not appear to be locked. Um, I start looking around to the other group, like, waiting for one of these characters to be outraged by what they're seeing. Oh, and I'm... And to bum-rush this group, start fucking killing everybody. There are dozens of ones here around. Specifically, the... The anger, the anger paladin, <laughs> and Uskar. <laughs> yeah, she she definitely doesn't look happy about any of this. Oh no, uh, Uskar's waiting, mumbling. Waiting for your move. Waiting for your move. To Alistair detect any thoughts, like just inside, you know, inside the door of the the house. No, you all have made it there. And, um, Rigel, just as a point of order, there are dozens of you want tea around. It is clear to anyone that if you were to just bum rush, as you said, you would be surrounded quite quickly. I'm fine dozens. with that. Dozens. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yep. Dozens means, like, more than a hundred. I mean, dozens is, that's quite a challenge. So yeah. At least thirty-six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he didn't. He didn't say a couple dozen. He said dozens. Wee! Here we go. Okay. Let's go inside, uh, guys. Um, yeah. Goodness. I say we head in. Are there any like open windows to this house? There are not. Can we look in. Uh, if you want to open the door, oh. you're more than welcome to. Or like, there, there, there are... Okay. okay, so there's a Grumps, but not an Argoth. I can fix that. Argoth. Oh, yeah, right. Not locked. I'm, oh, I'm going to put Argoth in the uh, Companions folder. Ah. That's where I pull familiars from. <laughs> so, Argos is looking for windows. Okay. Nope. Argos can go through walls. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you saw nothing. I, I I saw it for such a brief flash that I didn't see anything. Okay. 
You said there are windows? There are no windows. Oh, okay. Then Brayla's just going inside because this is a lot. Does the door open? I just can't get inside. Okay. Is it locked? It is not. All right. I'm just going to open it and walk in. So a huge pool of water in the center, directly beneath an opening in the roof of the same size as the pool. Marshy ground, oh. just mud all around. It seems like it's a gathering place. How high is the ceiling? The ceiling goes up about 40 feet up. And there is a raised platform made of old, Stop. made of old wood to the northern side of the building. Two flights of stairs leading up to either side of the platform. Um. Uh, is there any signs of act recent activity in there? Make a perception check. Is invisible. Okay. Braylee, you can tell that this was the site of a battle several days ago. It's hard to tell exactly what happened, but there's definitely signs of conflict here. There are signs of recent habitation. Do you set some uh, steps? They go up to something else. Two flights of stairs. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah, Argos is gonna fly up where he can see over the. You said there was a railing up there. It's not a railing. It's a raised platform, uh, walled off from the rest of the structure. Uh huh. In that case, he will come here and look in. Make a stealth check for Argos at advantage. And I don't have that open. Where are you going? Why are you crawling already? Sorry, Which character just... are you talking? Argoth, the know. closet. He's got to make a self check, and I forgot to have his page open. As this is going on, I'm going to start ritually casting Detect Magic. Such Good. Did that roll with advantage? Yes, good. 24. Okay. It's Argoth, the one thing he is actually good at. <laughs> Argoth quietly cracks the door and looks inside and sees a humanoid snake person armed with a wicked looking scimitar leaning up against the wall. She seems to be lightly conversing with somebody nearby. It, does the room like is it like complete the circle and then it's like one big room uh there is it does complete the circle on the southern portion of the room it does appear that there is a wall directly to the left of Argot. um looks like it's forms into another set of rooms inside of that area okay so it's like a wall here correct okay and there's one Argot can only see one but she does appear to be conversing with somebody else. Okay. Alistair will say the eastern door. Small room. At least two. Snake people. Here's a question. On your familiar, was it able to determine if the people in that room were being held willingly or not? The ones because that Argoth saw do not appear to be being held captive. And yeah. the door that Argoth looked into was not locked. Okay. Was Argoth able to tell how many there appeared to be? He only saw one, but they were talking to see, somebody. He could see yeah. one, but they were talking to at least another person, and another, yeah, person. Okay. Um, 
want. Hmm. Here's my suggestion. Toot Toot goes in so the, question is, the is eastern no... door, and we all go in through the western door, and we meet in the middle. Come here. That's what Alistair I was going can to go ask. with Toot Toot if you want. Do we wish? I was going to ask if we actually wish to engage them here, or if we wanted to try to move up to the temple first. Um. Uh, what is this structure made out of? Wood, wood, mud, and bricks. Wood and mud bricks. Hmm. I'm so, assuming it's fairly wet. It's probably not going to burn. That was going to be my next question. Because I do have a bottle of rather high alcohol content bourbon in my back backpack. Ad says, says, I have fireball. If we want to burn it, we can burn it, but... Yes, this but the thing is, very fireball. Flammable. Well, true. My only thing was a fireball is obviously a case of destructive magics being wielded against something, whereas you set up this to look like an accident. Yeah. <laughs> We're inside a building. Everybody out there looked like they were being lazy and lackadaisical. Let's kill everything in here now. Uh, as a point of order, the building is made of mud. Mud tends to not burn. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When you said mud brick, I was like, yeah, probably nothing, unless it's just the lower level and the higher is wood and straw, but I felt like I needed to ask. <laughs> uh, well, is there a way to lock those doors? You could certainly no. try. Which car will try? To lock the doors? Get... Mm -hmm. Which one's the one right, to the south You get yeah. the, uh... Oh, I, I meant the the um, the um ones where the people inside. No, that let's was... just go kill them. It's snake smashing time. It's St. Patrick's Day. We don't know... We don't know what they're in there doing. They're waiting to be whacked. That's what you do to snakes. And now I'm picturing the Simpsons episode. <laughs> do we want to do this thing, or do we want to try to bypass it and move up towards the temple is my only question. I think we need to... Ushkar would say that I think it'd be smarter to try and figure out where the leader is and dismantle it from top to bottom instead of bottom to top. Down. I'm sure the leader is at the temple. So that is Ushkar's opinion. All right. Um, so so you that think we even just head north to the temple? I'm, yeah. I mean, if that's okay. I do think we, if there's anything in that room, we should lock it in. That way it can't come up behind us later. So we do each door at the same time, it's not like they can come out the other door and then leave. Everybody make a stealth check. Who? Everyone. Been here for a while. <laughs> Discussing. Do we still have the. Yes, you would still have passive editors. Thank God. Like the lowest roll is a 16. Mm hmm. Oh, I haven't rolled in the character yet, so it's. Lowest roll is a 12. We're still the finger stopped. <laughs> Someone a rolled a 2? So. Yeah, the okay. still defender. The still defender talking. stays outside next time, okay? We just <laughs> let him hold. He holds a tree branch and stands there. You need to be able to snap it away like we do with our familiars. Nathaniel, have you used your sessional inspiration today? <laughs> I uh, take it from the sound I probably hint, need to. So hint, yes, hint. I will do so. It's hint. 
I will go ahead. If you would like to use it for the steel defender, you can do so to get a seventeen out of it. I'll do that. That was like a like a little that was a stomp stomp. Hit 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 hit. Okay, I'll spend too much longer in here. It'll be another one. If we're going north. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. North to the temple. While we still have Pass Without Trace. Is it just me, or does that center piece look like a giant snake could just come, like, erupting out of it? Looked scary. Oh, well, yeah, but... If you think we're getting out of this without fighting a giant snake, you're... <laughs> <laughs> delusional. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're fighting a big-ass snake. <laughs> it's fine. Emmett Steel what Defender, is... what are you doing over there? <laughs> He's up there so I can make his stealth checks. Easier. Oh, huh, I'm just teasing. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, everyone. What are you doing? Headed to the north of the temple. Well, east and north, <laughs> but. Tell everybody. Around the trees or through the trees? Um, that depends Overhill on what and Underhill. says about how much snake traffic there is along the stream. There wouldn't oh, be... Shit. Well, Argoth I... scouting up there would not see much traffic along the stream. Okay, wait. We're at the Pond Mother's home and we're going all the way to the temple? Yep. Ugh. Okay. Time to break in those new legs, Ragel. I mean... This is a multi-day trip, right? No. no. Each one of the squares is 100 feet. We're, 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 we're talking less, less than, than a, a kilometer. Mile. Okay, so another pass without a trace? No. Not yet. We still have a little bit of time on it. Yeah. You just you just yell that until Sean says reroll. Even at half movement, that's like a 20 minute walk. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm having a rough time with the map because it took us like a shitload of time through this. Like, yeah. Well, to be fair, right. while walking through the crab thing was would have been really wobbly and wet and harder to maneuver. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All good. All good. I'm cool. I'm all on good. board. I'm on board. I'm on board. So, tally ho. Tally ho. So, leaving the Pond Mother's home then? Yes. Yeah. So, what exactly would you all, what exactly are you all doing? Heading Anything along up? the stream, heading west and, I mean, east and north toward the temple. Let's go ahead and get another stealth check, a group stealth check. Uh, you still have past that a trace up. This will be to get past all of this here. As you all pass north of the brood pools, <laughs> doing well to keep yourselves out of sight and out of trouble, you do hear that there is most definitely a decent gathering happening at the brood pools. Lots of laughter, lots of shouting. Sounds like they're having a good old time down there. You want to at least are. Argoth will do a flyover of the brood pool. Argoth would see about half a dozen visible you want to. They are eating eggs. Oh my man. They guys, eat the unborn. Ah, oh, these things are gross. Uh, Genocide's no, going on down there. Bypass. We gotta go. Ugh. We, we have to stop that. Yep. Now, yeah. Wait, you want you want to fight these guys that we see? You know that there are dozens and dozens of them. The grip. No, no, There's the about dozen, a half the dozen at the brood pool. Possibly oh, yeah. more, but Argoth sees a half dozen at the brood pools. Argoth's got devil sight. 
Oh, this is daylight with nice. devil sight. All right, never mind. I was thinking he saw invisibility. Never mind. Um, yeah. You know we... what? I'll fight. Let's go. Let's so roll. Cool to stop the babies no. from getting eaten. Hammer will smash. How close cool. can we get stealthily to the? To the brood pool. With your current Ooh. roll, you can get all what the way up to the roll. mound that separates the brood pool from the river. Do it. Awesome. I'll go ahead and put you all on. Wait. A little bit of a visual aid here. Does Adso have fireball, and is it counterproductive to cast fireball? On the eggs? If we yeah, just please. burn all of the eggs. <laughs> yes, Atso Atso has fireball, and yes, it could be very counterproductive, both from a big, huge flare of "we are here" and murdering all the so, eggs, which is what we're trying to stop them from doing. So, okay. my question is, God, that's let's creepy think about as hell. This, guys. Uh, I would recommend that those of us where various forms of distance weapons be the first ones to open fire upon them to thin them out before they can raise an alarm. Uh oh, we just lost something. Yeah, something went red. I'm the I'm extending the map out so we can see it better. Oh. One moment. Okay. Fuck. So it's the blood of our enemies. enemies. You're giving us more room. Back ass. Listen, I will give you fifty dollars if you go to sleep right now. Uh, okay. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> All My of us. child. I was in the army. You say that, exactly. it just like hand me the fifty bucks. <laughs> I was say, yeah, I was in the army. We can fall asleep anywhere, anytime. All right. So you all see what hey. you see. Hey, where are the boys at? At Does home. anybody in the army have I don't see insomnia. the Stuart or anything Yo. anywhere. No. Oh, who's out twice then? Rayla's out twice, my bad. I... Did what? Sorry. Uh, oh! <laughs> what is happening? I'm sorry. I'm watching NCAA at the same time as I'm this game. Yeah, my, my 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 daughter's school, Longwood, like made it into its first tournament this year, um, and they got curb stomped by Tennessee today. <laughs> uh, Kentucky, which was ranked number two nation or area or whatever, got stomped, beat, not stomped, but beaten by fifteen rank. Unbelievable. Like, um, was that the? Uh, they got beat by Richmond. <laughs> what sport is this? It's awesome. It's, it's the one. It's the one with. It's the one with the ball, right? It's the yeah. one where like a lot of people throw a ball at a little net. Yep. I am also. I, I am also I, well learned in sports not ball. A sport guy. I am not a sports ball guy at all. But once a year, I'm like, yay. Yeah. Let's watch. I'm this. mostly a football guy, but. When the local teams and the the daughter's school, I I pay attention. Yeah. Anyways, God. Yeah. Uh. So what's the difference between the the different things down here? Okay. So you see several different types of snake people down here. This guy here is very obviously in charge. He is kind of just standing around, watching the proceedings with everything. He's looking around, watching everybody. Um, Sorry, these guy? little guy, this guy here, the grossest one. Okay. That Got one. It. Oh. oh, I thought that was his face. What the? <laughs> All right. There are right. a few right. of the little subservient ones running around. They seem to be pulling eggs out of the pools and bringing them over and sticking them in piles. What? Is that those guys? Yep. Ew. No. These ones. Ish. The big one. You see, he plops down onto his butt, his stomach distended, and just sits there. This guy. There's two of those. On, it's gross. It's gross, man. Brayla <laughs> points her hammer at the big one. 
That's the one she wants. All oh. yours. Which guy's going after the leader? I'll be along to help you in a minute. Since she throws his rope back at him. <laughs> Where's the where the fuck is there it is prone hey, that uh, one's sitting you, on his ass. Can you give us a can you give us a close up on these other little shits that we're <sighs> looking at? What? <laughs> oh, what, what the fuck? And then you've got thing. this one and that yeah. particular oh. one. He looks like a dragonborn. Do those so, like even do, do, do those guys even questions. have like human hands or are they like a, like snake things? Or... That one has a human head and human upper body with a serpentine lower body instead of legs. Well, he's about to not um, have a face. So the other one, the one here to the north, that one has a human head and body, and there are two snakes where its arms should be. All right, who played G.I. Joe in the 80s? Oh, yeah. Cobra like, Commander. What about, that, that, what about yeah. this? It's like Cobra Commander became a fucking actual snake or in something. That movie? No, yes. Cobra Commander tried to become a pretty boy. Look at Mr. his Mr. Evil Top Knot Guy. Mr. Yeah. Evil Top Knot Guy is almost entirely humanoid. He has a few um, scaly patches on him and stuff like that. One moment, I'll give you a better description of him. Um, mostly humanoid for his mid-body and his face and legs, except his arms begin to shift into almost snakes like themselves. Give me one moment. Let me see if I can just show you a picture of this guy. It's a picture of Cobra Commander. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh, I need to cast that again. God. What was there like? They had a chant or something. It was like. Oh, God. oh Cobra La! Some shit. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Nice childhood uh, coming back to me now. I know, right? I think I can show you all this art now. I think I have hidden everything relevant. Oh, no, if you'd be able to see the character sheet, damn it. It's the, the art is definitely worth seeing, so let me see if I can... Find you one. We promise not to look at the character sheet, you can just show it. I've got, I've got an image. It's cool, we're gonna kill all of these snakes. I love you, I do, you're so it's pretty. God, you're so supportive of all of us. Thank you. <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> oh, you're oh, oh, Here you're talking we go. to your baby. Oh, I get it. There you go. Oh, uh, no. Oh, I don't no, like no. it. Oh, Pass. no. no. So That's Pass. from Tomb of Annihilation, Pass. isn't it? What? It's no, actually no. from Volos. But yes, oh, also cool. in Tomb of Annihilation. Uh -huh. Cool yeah, as I'm hell. Gonna, I'm going to say pass. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh man! You all seen the TikToks where they're going through the, the yeah. freaking monster Smash. manual, the freaking the Smash. waifu catalog they call it. Uh huh. Oh uh -huh. man! That is not a smash. Pass, please. <laughs> gonna f we're gonna fuck that guy up so hard. Thank you for saying. Uh right? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> your natural pauses in your convert in your sentences sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, the cadence is definitely, definitely to be, uh, to be admired. <laughs> Sometimes so. I'm like, all right, where is he going with this? All right, so they don't know. We're stealth right here, right? You are, in fact, that stealthed right there. A snake guy. So go ahead and go ahead and discuss all the strategy that you want to everybody. Um, but we are... Game over. We are going to go ahead and call it a session here. And when oh, we come okay. back next week, we will engage with these Yuan-Ti.